right, so let's get started with the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework. And this is the landing page where you see all the sections of it. And we're going to jumpstart to the ready section where we find the documentation about the landing zones. And you see the native landing zone, the first party landing zone. And this is where you find also the reference about Terraform landing zone. So you have here a quick example with the foundation landing zone. And if you scroll at the very bottom, you get the link to get access to the source code directly. So let's get there. And you can see that we have all the artifacts uh, ready and we have the Terraform code, the Terraform code for the landing zones and for the module, as well as a couple of other elements that we're going to review together. So if you want to get started, let's jump there and you will see all the things that you need to know in order to uh, deploy it on your laptop first. Let's review one of the very first landing zone that we have, which is the foundation that allow you to really set the diagnostics, governance and security foundations of your subscription. And here you see that to get started, you have to have Visual Studio Code, Docker and Git on your laptop. And this is how you get started. But before that, let's review a little bit more configuration elements. So you see that we have both these elements and I can see the modules are present in the registry. So if you go to the registry from Terraform, registry.terraform.io, you can find there all the modules. Uh, some of them been used uh, 12,000 uh, times already. Um, we have different stuff like site recovery, virtual network, for instance. And this one's been used 10,000 times already. And you can see that we have the different uh, uh, arguments that you need to input and in different variables. You have also some examples and you have uh, the version. So we're using strong uh, semantic versioning in order to make sure that you're enforcing the right configuration inside your environment. So let's get back to the get started section. And if we uh, have uh, this, you see that once my prerequisites are matched on my uh, laptop, then I will be able to get started and clone the content on my environment. So this is what I'm going to do now. Let's git clone that on my laptop and get started with the code. So I have the code locally on my laptop. Now let's just open it using uh, Visual Studio Code. Once I get there, you see the environment will uh, react and we'll see that we have different elements. We have a workspace and we have a dev container. So we can uh, choose to open it in a workspace. Uh, here you see it cannot find Terraform because actually I don't have Terraform on my laptop. Uh, but we are going to use the one that is present into the dev container into the rover. So here I do reopen in uh, Docker, reopen in the container. And you can see that now transparently I have access to the rover from my environment. First step is to do the login. So I do a rover login, then I can do the rich signing into my browser. And once the signing is completed, then I can start with uh, choosing the right subscription. I'm going to zoom it a little bit more. And then you can basically run the launchpad. So the launchpad is the very foundation, it's the very first landing zone that you're using. And this is what we use in order to store uh, the state inside an Azure storage account. So we can uh, iterate on it and I can roam from one laptop to the other, but still using uh, the Terraform uh, state file inside the Azure storage account. So you see that now uh, I'm actually launching uh, Terraform. It's going to check at the modules and the plugin. And now it's asking me for the region to deploy the launchpad. And the launchpad, as I mentioned, is just the file for the Terraform state. And you can perfectly have your state in Southeast Asia and deploy in any uh, Azure region. There's no problem at all. So here you see I'm fast forwarding a little bit. It has finished the execution of, um, of it. And you see that now the state is uploaded. So when I do a uh, rover again, I'm able to see that I am connected to the environment. I was able to locate uh, the state uh, and the launchpad. And uh, actually those elements are here in my subscription. So you see the level zero here. Those are the elements that we have. So we are using gen randomly generated names. So that is unique in the world. And you can see if I go to my level zero, I have access to the state and automatically Rover for me will link this state to my environment based on my credential. 
and we store um, the elements to find back the storage account inside a key vault and you see that this key vault is uh, restricted because uh, I can see the list of secrets that I use for that and uh, I only have myself and the launchpad that are uh, entitled to access this key vault so it's restricted by default of course in its permission. Once I have that ready I'm actually uh, okay to get started and deploy the first landing zone which is the landing zone CAF Foundations. So we can quickly review the configuration of this guy but as we mentioned the CAF Foundation is really to set on a particular subscription all the foundations like the naming convention, the tagging structure you want to use, the resource groups you want to use, the accounting settings you want to use and how long you want to keep the logs for all of those foundations like the governance as well, the resource group and the policies if you want it and the security settings. Do you want to have security center standard and sentinel enabled? This is just by using this toggle feature and switching it to true or false depending on what you want to achieve. So let's get started. We do a rover, the name of the landing zone and we say apply and automatically it's going to apply that configuration into my environment. So let's review a little bit the structure. If you remember the ER key model, uh, you see that we have different landing zones that we're going to stack on uh, top of each other. So we just apply the launch pad and now we're going to apply the level one uh, landing zone, which is security and compliance. And later we are going to apply the level two, which is hub and spoke and shared services uh, inside this subscription. So this is how we do complex service realization uh, inside an enterprise environment. We're going to talk about that much more details in the slide but for now this is what you need to know. So if we go there you see that now I can actually filter my subscription on what has been deployed by Terraform. I can use the tags in my user subscription and I can see that we have two new resource group appear. We have the core security and operations. If I click on operations I have um, you see all my log analytics uh, solutions and of course my log analytics workspace and my storage account for long-term retention of the uh, logs and here we go uh, now I'm ready to apply another environment another landing zone and as well as previously described I'm going to use rover to do that so if I just have a quick look at uh, the hub and spoke environment you see that here I'm going to do uh, hub and spoke topology so let's just run it because it takes a little bit of time and review it while we are running it so I do the apply and if we look there you see that in my configuration file I have my whole environment configuration so my name of my resource group the settings that I want for the virtual network I'm going to deploy as a hub you can see I'm going to use Azure firewall you can see I have my active directory subnet with a set of network security groups and you can also see that I have Network Watcher enabled, I have the firewall uh, uh, that is configured here with a set of rules and I have my user defined route object as well as a couple of additional stuff like DDoS protection. Do I want to have additional protection and do I want to access it uh, remotely via uh, Azure Bastion which is a Bastion host as a service, uh, native service in Azure and you can say I want to have a VPN gateway, yes or no. And for the sake of time, I have disabled it in this uh, in this demo. But you have all the elements describing your configuration. You even have Key Vault where you store your uh, keys. So if we go to the network, you can see that we have all of our environment here. My virtual network has been deployed. I have here my firewall, and inside this uh, firewall, I can review the configuration and I can also see that remember we use the diagnostics and we define the diagnostics in level one in the foundation well here you see that I have reused those diagnostics and I'm actually doing my service composition so it's not just a vignette being deployed it's a vignette with its diagnostic settings and the same thing uh, actually applies for the firewall I have my tags present I have the IP address in the network I have the diagnostic settings that are also applied to this environment so it's not just the component being deployed is the components that are ready to use inside my environment and that are compliant with the settings I define in my foundation and here you see my pri public IP addresses and you can also see that I have my local network gateway and my key vault that I use to store my uh, VPN uh, pre-shared key. So that's the 
beauty of it and now that you have experimented you can just destroy the environment that's a um, quick test i can destroy and now i'm done and the test is uh, is completed that's how you get started with the landing zone and you can go on aka.ms tf landing zones